Hello, this is a surprise unscheduled bonus episode of Legendary Adventures, a Legend of Zelda playthrough podcast. This is Season 7, which is all about the Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons. I've just started my playthrough of a linked game of Oracle of Seasons, but on Friday I released a short bonus episode highlighting some of the differences in the start of an unlinked game. I got a few requests to do something similar with the linked game opening of Oracle of Ages. So we're just going to fit that in right here before we get too deep into Oracle of Seasons. To start a linked game of Oracle of Ages, we have to enter a password we got upon completing an unlinked game of Oracle of Seasons. I did not complete an unlinked game of Seasons myself, so I went to Google for a password and entered it here. After inputting the password, we notice that Link looks different on the file select screen. He's holding the Harp of Ages and has an extra heart. We can also see whoever completed the game had named their Link, Link. We select the game and we begin. In a dark lair, a red flame burns. The Gerudo witches, Kotake and Kuume, cackle with glee. Because of the actions of Onyx, General of Darkness, in the land of Holodrum, the Flame of Destruction burns. The pair now plan to light the flames of sorrow and despair to bring about the return of the evil king. A very similar cutscene plays out at the start of a linked game of Oracle of Seasons. Just swap the red flame on the left for a blue flame on the right, and swap the name Onyx for Varen and Holodrum for Labrina. The Triforce urges Link to accept its quest. He lands on his feet in a forest within Labrina. We're unable to open our menu at the moment, but Link is currently unarmed. There is no way to go but up, where he runs into a possessed Impa with a blue appearance who is seemingly being menaced by monsters. The monsters run off when they see Link. The possessed Impa does not recognize Link, but sees a Triforce symbol on his hand and recognizes him as a Hyrulean hero. Here I think it becomes pretty clear the changes to this opening are not going to be as dramatic as the changes that we saw in Oracle of Seasons. We travel with Impa and we push a stone marked with a triangle out of the way for the possessed Impa and make our way to find the person she is looking for, a singer named Nehru. We follow Nehru's song, speak to the crowd around her. A bear will move out of the way once we speak to it a second time. We then get a large still image rendered in a different style than the typical game graphics showing Link listening to Nehru's song. Link is then introduced to Nehru and her friend and protector, Ralph. They do not know him, nor do they acknowledge the events in Holodrum in any way. So far, the only change that we've seen is that opening cutscene with Twin Rova. Nehru explains that she asked Hyrule to send messengers when she heard that her country, Labrina, would face many evils. She feels something evil is approaching and so it does. Impa is revealed to be possessed by a sorceress named Varen, who then possesses the body of Nehru and travels to the past. We see some of the impacts of her time travel. Monkeys fade from existence, a child is turned to stone. Ralph rushes off on a quest to save Nehru. Impa awakens from her possession, and it's here that we see our first acknowledgement of Link and his adventure in Holodrum. Impa explicitly states that she was sent by Zelda to retrieve Nehru, and she says that they should not have forgotten about Link as the hero of Holodrum. In an unlinked game, Impa only says that shadows were surrounding Nehru, and she does not specifically say that she was sent on this mission by Zelda. In the linked game, Impa recognizes Link as the only hero who can save Labrina, and gives him a shield which was entrusted to her by Zelda. This is another difference. In the unlinked game, she says the possession of Nehru was physically taxing on her, so she must rely on Link and gives him a sword, which was entrusted to her by Zelda. When we open our menu, we see that we already have a sword, just as we did when starting an unlinked game of Oracle of Seasons. From here, we have to go find the Maku Tree in Lina City. The differences between the linked game and the unlinked game on that quest more or less disappear. The quest involving meeting the Maku Tree and getting directions to the first dungeon plays out the same as it did in an unlinked game. We travel through a cave, we meet the Maku Tree, she disappears due to the time travel shenanigans from Varen. We then follow Ralph through a portal to the past. We learn that the queen from 400 years ago is building a black tower as a guide for her lost love, a seafaring man. But since the arrival of Varen, she has required the people to work non-stop. 
and the day does not seem to end. We get a shovel from within the Black Tower, and we shovel our way back to the Maku Tree's cave. In the past, it's sort of a mini-dungeon, which requires us to solve some block-pushing puzzles and to find a key in order to reach the Maku Tree. When we find her, she's being menaced by some moblins, which we then take out. We return to the present, and she awards us with a satchel of ember seeds, and then points us to the first dungeon. All of this plays out the same between each version of the game, either linked or unlinked. I'd noticed no difference in the dialogue even. Now that doesn't mean that there aren't other changes. In the present, there is a second cave just opposite the Maku Tree Cave. This is the Hero's Cave. It's an optional mini-dungeon, but we can't enter it at this point because it requires the Power Bracelet to lift pots. We can also visit the home of Blossom and Bippin and continue their quest. As with a Link game of Oracle of Seasons, they moved, but this time to Lina City. Whoever got the code that I used had developed their son, who they named Yoshi, into a hyperactive child. I spoke to him before going to the Maku Tree. After going to the Maku Tree, I returned to their home and they had moved to the other side of the house. Yoshi asked if I had a girlfriend. I said yes. Blossom asked if I was a hyperactive child. I said no. She asked if I was quiet. Again, I said no. She asked if I was weird. I said yes. I did not play any further into the game to see how this would turn out, but based off a guide from Thonky.com, I'm guessing I sent Yoshi down the path of becoming a slacker. Between the opening of Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons, I would say that the changes between a linked and an unlinked game are much more dramatic in Seasons. In that game, the characters recognize Link right away from his adventure in Labrina. There are more and more frequent references to those events. And by starting with a sword, the Hero's Cave mini-dungeon at the start of Oracle of Seasons is cut out of the quest entirely, and it's replaced by that new linked game Hero's Cave optional mini-dungeon. This both alters the story and compresses the opening of the game quite a bit. In Ages, I feel that the story alterations are minor, and there's no difference in the length of the opening or the path that players will take through it. There are some other changes later in the game that are maybe arguably bigger than the ones that we see in Seasons. I'm thinking specifically of a mid-game mission to save Princess Zelda, plus in Oracle of Ages there's a square of the map within the Sea of Storms that's only accessible in a linked game. Although Oracle of Seasons introduces changes of its own, including a continuing background subplot involving Queen Ambi and certain items shifting between locations in both the linked and the unlinked game. In which game are the changes more dramatic? I don't think I can say with any real authority, not having completed a Link game of ages, but if the opening is any indication, I think Seasons may be the more dramatically changed game. I hope you enjoyed this bonus episode of Legendary Adventures Podcast. Feel free to subscribe if you want to follow along with my playthrough of the Zelda games. And a big thank you to everyone who has already subscribed. I am Paul Riley, and I'll see you next time.